Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we have for you something special. This is a first ever kit from Revosys. Uh, we have the, the, the ammo, uh, ammo of MIG Amenas uh, or slash ammo uh, first kit ever, uh, and now we've got the Revosys first kit ever, so it's another time of new kits. The last time this happened, if you guys probably remember, was when we had uh, new manufacturers like Mang and Tacom showing up. So now, that said, <laughs> I think some of these kits are uh, kind of in conjunction with, with existing uh, kit manufacturers that are out there. This kit looks a lot like uh, another manufacturer who I, I won't name, but, but I will say it looks, the packaging of the kit very, looks very similar. Uh, that may just be because they're using similar marketing companies in China. I do not know. I'm not going to even start to speculate on where plastic is produced and what factories and so forth. But uh, as most of the as Bus has been in the hobby for a long time, realize um, a lot of kit manufacturers actually are produced in the same location. But what matters is not the necessarily uh, all, all the time. What uh, what matters is not necessarily the the quality of the plastic because that obviously for all kit manufacturers has risen dramatically uh, in the last ten to fifteen years. But the quality of the CAD design and the accuracy and so forth are kind of even more important than uh, I think the, I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, so I'm not, I'm not trying to undersell the, the quality of the, the plastic manufacturing, but the, the initial design, let's put it, let's say that way, is, 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 uh, is also very crucial. So more than likely, this is designed by a specific team of people who decided to launch a new brand. So we thank them for sending us this kit, um, uh, sent direct from them. Uh, I don't have any personal contact with them, so I don't know who to thank specifically, but uh, but they did send us this sample. And this is kind of a rare beast. This is the Panzerkampfwagen 6 off C slash B, two in one. The, the VK 3601, 36.01, I mean, I don't really know why sometimes you see the dot in there and you don't see the dot in there sometimes. Obviously, the official German designations must have had the dot in there. But uh, this tank, for example, has been in World of Tanks for quite a while um, early on. I think it was probably in the initial German release, I want to say, uh, of the German tree of, of tanks. Uh, originally, it was a heavy, I want to say, and now it's a medium, or is it the other way around? Um, either way, it's a, um, a pretty formidable, ta formidable tank in the game. So again, uh, a tank that's in World of Tanks that is now appearing uh, in plastic. Uh, thanks, World of Tanks. Um, so let's go ahead. This one actually does have a full interior, and you can see the stock number is RS3001. Uh, taking a look at the side of the box, you can see they've got some interesting uh, uh, art depictions there for the, or 3D CAD depictions for the turret, showing different uh, turret designs and uh, even gun options and so forth. Uh, the interior uh, bits are, that are shown here for the Turk look, look quite detailed. Uh, and then also some, they're showing highly detailed hull interior components. Uh, t hull top hatches with interior detail. And on the other side, there are some ammo of MIG. Boy, they, their marketing department is, is like busy, busy, busy. <laughs> but the, some pro color profiles courtesy of ammo uh, of MIG Menas, and I'm sure they have paint sets or paint available for these various camos offered. But let's go ahead and uh, crack her open, shall we, and take a look. All right, so we've got um, nestled in nice uh, plastic here. Not the, oh, these are the, the openable flaps. I was going to say they weren't. But let's go ahead and do a quick parts count here. We've got one sprue with actually kind of three sprues on one uh, tree here. And then we have uh, a long sprue of, of uh, various little bits. And then we have some tools and interesting cone-looking thing here. And again, these are interesting because they're they're kind of smaller sprues, but ho still hooked together by their main trees. Uh, probably a lot of modelers would appreciate this because it's harder to kind of lose track of these. Uh, and if you want to snap snip, snip them off the main trees, you can. So that's kind of nice. Um, and again, they've done the same thing. This is uh, not the same uh, parts. It's not a repeat. It is a, a more additional parts. So clearly with the interior, we're going to be seeing a lot of parts here. But uh, just to give you an idea of what's in the box, kind of semi quickly without going through lots of little detail, which we will look at them more in detail in a bit. Um, some of the larger armor, uh, top armor and uh, other parts. Uh, the individual track links, which look complex, my goodness. Uh, I, see, I see pins and, 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 and shoe you know, horn guides and oh my goodness, I, that, that makes me nervous just looking at them. And then we have these bits, which are the actual I think, track links themselves. And uh, then we have a, a couple of individual sprues. Um, 
and the uh, obviously the lower hall. Now that they did that, the hall interestingly, uh, I'll, go, I'll open it up and look at it in more detail a bit. But the they've obviously included the entire hull section, like kind of like as it would have been coming out of the factory turret. Uh, some clear bits, which do include more than just the typical uh, glass um, and uh, vision ports and stuff. I'm seeing some other items there. And again, lots of detail here. Uh, a one-piece gun barrel with muzzle brake on it. Well, that looks nice. Looks like it's obviously slide molded. And uh, yeah. And another one with the uh, road wheels and um, suspension parts and even some back deck detail. We've got a photo etch piece here with a uh, number. Uh, looks like we've got an addendum to the manual, corrections and the instructions. So they've done a nice job there. Another small bit of photo etch, which is going to be easy to lose, so keep an eye out for that one. And then this uh, manual. So let's go ahead and take a look at the manual real quick before we get closer on the parts. We've got a parts overlay, which is good. We've got the lower hull going together with the road wheels. Um, they've got some color callouts here which is nice, the engine going together and going in the unit, um, and more of the lower hull details going on, kind of uh, lower hull to probably close to completion. Um, so there are some ammo storage racks, I guess, that I must have quickly skipped by. Ah, yeah, there we go. Um, and the, okay, the barrel is in one piece. There is a, a piece that goes on to the end. But yeah, otherwise it's a one-piece barrel, which is nice. And uh, then the the main gun going together with probably the turret. And turret interior details going on. Some more color shots. Uh, these are nice showing you various color painting options or painting uh, guide. Then there's the, the, the MO of MIG painting guide here in the middle with um, various options. Or actually, not in the middle. That was quick. That went together fast, it seemed like. I mean, 24 steps for a tank with interior. That's a lot of parts. <laughs> but it looks like they have everything notated here, so I'm, you know, I'm going to say it's still adequate. Um, probably someone building it will find out how good the instructions really are, but uh, yeah, we will, uh, we will forego uh, mentioning or forego trying to, skip to uh, hypothesize on the, in the, the, those uh, qualities of the instructions. Sorry, I got a little tongue-tied there. Um, all right, so yeah, the, how many? That was one, two, three, four different uh, color uh, options there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that hull. There will be photos at the end of this review if you're not familiar with my unboxings. There'll be me babbling about various bits, and then there'll be photos at the end. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, markings-wise, yeah, everything's marked Revsys 2017. Revosis, Revosis. I, I, you know, I realized um, that this is a complete uh, um, sidebar, but uh, somebody um, on another channel, I want to say it was Scale Modeler, the SMKR, so that's probably familiar to YouTube guys, um, he was looking at a, what I would call a Meng kit, and he pronounced it Meng, and I, and I thought to myself, Wow, are we all pronouncing Meng wrong all this time? And sure enough, I looked it up, and in Chinese, the name Meng is pronounced Meng. Now, I'm not going to change to Meng. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Meng, if you, want, if you wanted your name to be pronounced Meng, you should have put out a pronunciation guide <laughs> a long time ago. Because it's like, I, I just, I don't know. I'm going to go phonetic on that one. That, that is just one of those scenarios where, uh, yeah, it, it just, it doesn't seem right. You know, if, you, if in China, you want your name to be Meng, and there is a, there is a, uh, um, in, if you look at Meng in Chinese, there's a, a little um, uh, apostrophe, whatever, a pronunciation mark over the E, which I guess is supposed to tell you it's pronounced with a U sound. And, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm not German, I'm not European, I do not, I do not use pronunciation marks o on letters. So, again, uh, uh, you know, since Meng knew they were going to be essentially marketing this kit to... Uh, to North Americans and slash British people and so forth, like they should have just done M-U-N-G M -U -N -G then. Because technically speaking, the name is in Chinese characters. It's not, it's not in, you know, alphanumeric Roman characters. So they could have spelled it any which way they wanted to. Actually, well, even the people who originally were doing the, the, the name for that Chinese family name, they could have said, oh, let's just call it M-U-N-N-G, because that makes a whole lot more sense if they want to pronounce Hmong. All right, anyways. <laughs> 
Sidebar over. Rebo says it's back to your <laughs> it's back to your stuff. All right. So um, again, nice details I'm seeing on this. Uh, you know, they've, they've built in some of the uh, parts that are usually separate part pieces actually, and just molded them right onto the the hull, which is interesting. Uh, weld marks all look clean and nice. Um, we can get some nice uh, little divity things here for connecting some of the parts, which look pretty pretty uh, pretty good. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the turret. So I'm curious in comments. Oh, even on Armorana, how many how many people knew that it was Meng? Because everybody I've heard ever say it said Meng. I mean, everybody associated to their their <laughs> going back into my slipping back into my, my cyborg thing again. But everybody I've ever heard say it, like you know, at the shows they've been at and at the you know, I mean, I've haven't I met them? I think I've met them at shows and stuff before, and they've never pointed it out. So maybe they just don't care. They don't care how it's pronounced. Um, so this is kind of like a Panzer IV turret, right? Or is this more specific to this tank? But um, Complete with shot traps. Uh, anyways, so detail nice here, nice curvature, nice weld marks. Yep, looks good. Um, well, let's go ahead and take a look real quick at the track assembly. Okay. All right. Well, here's a, here's something I would be critical about. So, where is? Maybe I just missed it. We'll, we'll keep looking. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. There's no track assembly bit. There's a lot of parts for tracks, but they're kind of just showing it. Oh, tracks all together. Um, I mean, maybe somebody's going to point out. Oh no, it was on. It was in this section. You missed it. But it looks like they just have this tracks X94 for each side. I mean, let's take a look at the, the detail here. So we've got individual links. These pieces with. Kind of built-in double, um, you know, shoehorn or horn guide horns or whatever they're called, guide horns, right? Uh, and then for some reason there's some individual ones here. Not sure where those are going. And then there's these little pin things. So I, I guess, assuming these are for kind of unique scenarios, right? Maybe the where they join up, I, I suppose, because that would kind of make sense. There's well, we still leave you with four. But anyways. Um, so it looks like it would just be adding one of these um, shoe horns to each of the tracks. Yeah, that's what it looks like in terms of number of parts and stuff. So still, not sure why they couldn't have just molded those on in one piece. I mean, yeah, that's going to be some serious redundancy of, of, of build. That was an optivizer and putting it far enough down that, that maybe I'm getting these in frame. Okay. All right. So, um, so clearly they, they hook in like this and yeah, they're not snapped together. So you're, you're going to glue. So you can see, I think that they just fit in place. And then of course the guide horns are going to go over these. Maybe that's why they did this uh, after they're fit in place or the, the track guides. But yeah, there's no, there's no real snap together there. So yeah, I think the tracks are going to be maybe a little bit of work. Uh, maybe uh, actually they're going to be a lot of work, but uh, maybe um, with this system, they'll come out looking really, really accurate or good. I mean, I, I, I'm not a track expert. Uh, I'll leave that to Adam Mann to, to discuss. Maybe he's working on this kit or, or we'll have it at some point. Maybe he'll even request this kit, being that it's kind of new and, and, uh, and interesting and so forth. So uh, there you go, Adam. We've got an invitation. <laughs> um, so, yeah. All right. So track's, track's done. In case anybody's going, ooh, what kind of tool is that? I've never seen something like that. This is kind of like a, a tweezer with, with, with cutters on the end. I, I believe this was made by UMM. It was. But um, yeah, it's, it's good for this, these kind of tasks where you want to cut something really flat. So, uh, all right, pushing on, which I'm sure I edited a lot of that out, but because I can't, this video can't be forever. God, how long have we gone already? 15 minutes? Well, that's 15 minutes unedited, obviously. I, I do like these reviews to be somewhat short, so not short, short, but. All right, so um, engine uh, deck area is fairly Solid. I, I don't know how they did this tank with no, you know, uh, visible rear engine stuff. 
Uh, I think it looks like they have a, they have kind of grill covers look, look from the artwork. I guess they're kind of covers that cover up uh, maybe some of the, the uh, what would be here, and they're just not showing it in the actual kit form. But yeah, you'd think there'd have to be some kind of air exchange going on. And uh, yeah, production quality looks great. Uh, these are the rounded sprue types, so not quite caught up to that new level of stuff. Again, for these smaller ones, uh, there's some of the ammo uh, racks, but I'll take photos of those and you can kind of see. Um, like I said, I don't want this video to be too long, so opening every bag to just kind of go, oh, look, there's another sprue with detail stuff. I, I know it, sometimes it gets kind of tedious. I'm fully aware of these things. Um, again, some nice detail. I think this is on the inside turret, I'm guessing. The turret, is it the turret floor? If so, I guess they had little hatches to get up in here. That's kind of interesting. Or maybe this is just the standing spot. I don't know what those, those obvious look, hatchway looking things would be then. Um, nice instrumentation detail here for the driver, I'm assuming. The engine parts, the seats actually, the seats have little, little butts kind of uh, depressed into them. I'm not sure if that's what the seats looked like after they were used for quite a while, but yeah, that's kind of an interesting detail if, if that's the case. And uh, again, some small parts here, some of the internal um, uh, control levers and things. You know, the, the steering wheel, got to have a steering wheel. And again, that one I'm going to skip. Let's go ahead and take a look at the, um, the road wheels section. So again, some nice um, level of detail here. I'm not, I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me going, oh, you know, amazing. It's, it's, it's good, you know, solid work here. Um, not sure what reference vehicles are available for this. I mean, are, are there even surviving, I assume there are some surviving 3601 uh, tanks. If there are none and they're going on all photos and art and various, uh, you know, schematic details and things like that, I can see why some of these details look kind of, I don't know, soft or just, you know, well, we don't know exactly what that looks like. Um, but yeah, this, 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 um, this is some of that fan work. I'm not sure where that's on the sides, isn't it? So I guess, yeah, this, maybe the, maybe the air exchanging and the heat exchange stuff was, was on the side of this vehicle. It could explain why there's nothing on the back there. But, um, and again, that's some of the internal parts, a lot of small detail bits on there. We'll take photos. Same for the, all of these, um, individual ones. I will take some photos of all that stuff, and you can see various parts that call out. But I do want to take a look at this one, which is the the one that has the gun barrel and some other options. So there's that um, that one piece barrel. A little bit of a seam line I can see down there, probably just requiring a little bit of sanding. And the barrel end bit there. Uh, I'm not sure what this piece is. Is this, is this, yeah, I have no idea what that is. It's just, just have the one gun option, right? Or maybe it has, oh, did, I think it did say it has multiple guns. Maybe that's like the Kanonen gun. Is that the Kanonen? I'm probably not saying that right, but I know this tank had one. Uh, it's a very lethal gun in, in World of Tanks, that's for sure. People don't like running up against it. And uh, yeah, so some of those options there. And then photo etch, which again has that second smaller piece, but I'll take some photos of this. Lots of grill work, lots of small detail, inter internal detail handles, things like that, and so forth. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some photos, and then we will come back and conclude.
Alrighty, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos on this new Panzer Kampfwagen 6 off CB from Revosys, the VK36.01 or 3601. This is RS3001. Uh, you, you might find the, the kit hard to find, I would imagine, uh, being that it's the first kit available. But uh, definitely to take a look around for it, I'm sure some of the online uh, sellers have it. Um, can't don't know anybody myself who has it. They did send us this direct. So our thanks to Revisus again for sending us this sample. We hope to see more from them. I'd say overall this is a very competent release, especially a first release. Certainly a tank that hasn't gotten much love uh, from the kit making um, side of things. So uh, I'm sure people have been kind of waiting for a version of this to come out and. Uh, uh, at least a newer modern version. I'm not sure if an older kit exists, uh, to be fair. Um, having the full interior and, and these uh, single-piece, uh, well, two-piece barrel options with the muzzle brake built in and uh, even detail like these smoke dischargers and stuff uh, all look very good. Um, the tracks, I think, are probably the only part that I would kind of throw up a, a question mark, and I'd be curious to see somebody who builds it how, how easily they go together. It looks like they'll go together in terms of link-to-link -link fairly easily, and it looks like the, the, the guide horns will go on there uh, pretty easily as well. I'm just not sure how much actual total work is going to be involved in doing that. Uh, but again, with those types of things, you, you, know, you get a system down, you try to you know, do as many as you can stand and, and then take a break and come back to it later kind of thing. So um, still wish maybe, maybe, maybe someone would invent some tracks that are just, I don't know, fully functional and just kind of go onto the tank the way, the way they, you, know, you don't have to do hardly any work. But then again, I guess that wouldn't be a kit then, would it? All right, well, if you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, please leave them below in the comments section, whether you're on YouTube or our website. And uh, give us a like or a thumbs up if you like this video. You can also subscribe to our channel uh, on YouTube, and you can also subscribe on Kitmaker Network if you feel, feel you'd like to give us uh, a few bucks a month, and that helps with our expenses and sending out kits for samples and all that stuff if we can ever get back to that point. Anyway, so we're not asking for reimbursement. <laughs> um, we do, this kit, by the way, is available for a project. You can check out our samples page if you're interested. Uh, we should have... Uh, various kits available. Hopefully, I uh, have this already up there. Uh, but if not, it's available for a build feature or a build review. That means building it, obviously, and then writing writing up something about it and taking photos and so forth. So, And uh, I guess that pretty much covers everything. So we'll see you next time on Cracking the Box. Mm -hmm.